fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. And here's The Lone Ranger. A long time ago, a man fought an enormous animal bigger than an elephant. When I found the bones of that animal in the desert, I realized that size alone doesn't always win. That little man must have prepared himself to conquer the monster. He must have known, even in those days, that champions are made, not born. And that's still true today. Anyone hoping to become a champion needs lots of energy to sharpen his skills and to back those skills with power. Right, Lone Ranger. One of the big reasons champions choose Wheaties is for energy to help them get on their way. It's easy to see where that energy comes from when you know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Friends... Keep in mind this advice from the Lone Ranger. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? Hey! <laughs> Henry Burke, a prosperous-looking man of middle age, went to the frontier town of Greenville as the representative of an eastern syndicate. After several weeks of quiet operations, he made the acquaintance of two hard-faced men who were willing to do practically anything for a price. Burke met Matt and Jed in the Greenville Cafe and outlined his desires. And I'm willing to pay each of you $50 for a job that shouldn't take more than one day. What's the job, Mr. Burke? I want you to move the boundary markers on the eastern side of Balanced Rock Mountain. From here, that's the far side, facing the Badlands. Yes. You see, that side of the mountain is owned by just two men. The northern part is owned by someone named Gibson. Who owns the southern part? I do. I bought it a few days ago. The dividing line is marked by a row of posts driven into the ground at 50-foot intervals from the top of the mountain to the base. I want those posts moved about 200 feet to the north. Then some of Gibson's land will be on your side of the boundary. Gibson might gun anyone who tries to steal his land. No one around here has ever seen Gibson. He inherited the land. I doubt that he's ever looked at it. Why do you want more of that worthless land? That needn't concern you, Jed. We'll start moving the post tomorrow morning and see you the next day to collect. Jed and Matt left Greenville early the following morning and rode to the top of Balanced Rock Mountain, named for a huge boulder that seemed to be precariously balanced on the crest. Oh, oh, oh. Easy. They drew rein and dismounted beside a white post several feet in height. Bert don't know it yet, but he's going to pay us a lot more than $50. For what? For keeping our mouths shut. Let me tell you something. Remember the men who were working out of Greenville a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Those men were surveyors working for the railroad. When I heard that, I did some snooping and learned what Burke is planning. Yeah? You see, the railroad is going to lay tracks across the Badlands. You'll go through a tunnel to Greenville and continue west. A tunnel? Yep, right through this mountain. Burke represents an eastern syndicate. He's been getting options and all the land the railroad has to buy to build the tunnel. Oh, so that's it. The syndicate will buy the land, then sell it to the railroad at a fancy price. That's how I figure it. But Burke said he bought the land next to the Gibson property. He did. The tunnel's to go through Gibson's land. But after the boundary line is moved, it'll appear to be Burke's property. So Burke will sell it to the railroad. Ah. He's sort of double-crossing the syndicate that sent him here. Yeah. He's trying to put over a slick deal for himself. 
and he'll get away with it. Unless we talk. He'll have to pay plenty to keep us quiet. Now, let's get to work. Hey, Matt. Huh? There's a man at the foot of the mountain. We can't let him see us moving the post. Well, we'll chase him away. Easy. Right, up, steady there. Get up. Get up. Get up. Barnaby Boggs, the man at the foot of the mountain, had been a rainmaker and peddler of worthless medicines until the Lone Ranger became a friend and influenced him to earn an honest living. He was at present a photographer, and he crouched beneath the black hood of a camera set on a tripod. He didn't notice the men who rode toward him until... Oh, 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 oh. Hey, you. Who are you and what are you doing? Hey, I'm... Oh, Boggs is the name. Barnaby Boggs. My name is lettered on my wagon there. Also, my profession. I'm a photographer. Huh? Is that like a surveyor? Uh, no. I've seen surveyors, and they have an outfit set on a tripod like that. Well, whatever you are, clear out. You're on private property. All right, all right. You needn't hold a gun on me. I'll put this outfit aboard your wagon. Careful, you'll break my camera. There, you're loaded. Yeah, yep, yes, yes. Maybe this will speed you. I'm going, I'm going. Get. Oh, oh. Bob's horses, frightened by slaps and gunshots, oh. raced away from the base of the mountain and continued over a small rise into a valley. Oh. Bob's clung to the seat of the wagon, oh. knowing that it might overturn at any instant. Oh. It sounds seem to add to the panic of the team. And then... Oh. Bob's heard a familiar shout. He looked to his left. Great game, the a masked man on his great horse, Silver, was approaching at an angle. Presently, he raced alongside the horses. Hey, old bug! Clutching the reins and the pommel of his saddle in one hand, the Lone Ranger leaned far to one side and picked up the dragging reins of the runaway horses. Then he straightened in the saddle. Hold her! Ho! Ho! There! You got him under control! There, Stubborn! Barnaby, are you all right? I w- was scared half to death, but I'm all right now. Sakes alive, you sure came at the right time. Whew, this is once more I owe my life to you. I'm glad I saw the runaway. I'd better get down from the seat, flip the wagon over to make sure nothing's broken. Be steady, big fellow. I'll help you. Say, isn't that Tonto right in his way? Yes, Dan Reed is with him. Oh, 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 oh. Tonto, Dan Reed. Uh, Hi there. Oh, Barnaby. Hi, Barnaby. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, see the sign on my wagon? Barnaby, you must be one of the first photographers in this part of the country. Yeah, I reckon so. I read about it and sent east for a camera and equipment. I made some fair to Midland pictures and showed them to Mr. Horace Greeley when he came into my store during his western trip. You've probably heard of Horace Greeley. Yes, of course. He publishes the New York Tribune. Yeah, well, he liked my work. Said he wanted to buy photographs that would show the scenic splendors of the glorious west. Oh. Uh, I saw the chance to escape from the humdrum life of a storekeeper. So I sold my store, bought more equipment, and set out to make pictures for Mr. Greeley. Oh. Boggs told of his recent experiences as a photographer, including the incident at the foot of the mountain. Dan Reed, the Lone Ranger's nephew, was particularly interested. Well, you've certainly chosen an interesting business. It sure is, Dan. Wish I had time to tell you more about it, but I've got to get going. Where are you going next, Barnaby? I'm going to make some pictures of Rocky Canyon. I want to get them done in time to send them to Mr. Greeley in the next batch. The Rocky Canyon isn't far from here. That's right. We're planning to camp near Greenville for a few days to rest our horses. We may see you again. Good, good. I'll spend one or two days at Rocky Canyon. Then I'll go to Greenville to mail my pictures. I'll wait there till I hear from you. Ho, ho, Mr. Ho, boy, ho. Steady, boy. Two days later, Dan Reed rode into Greenville in the morning to purchase supplies and also to find out if Barnaby Boggs had arrived. When he entered the general store, he found the proprietor, who was also postmaster, sorting the mail. You expecting mail? No, no, I came to buy some groceries. Uh-huh. Well, you in a hurry? Not at all. I'd like to finish sorting the mail. Go right ahead, I'll wait. Morning, Sam. Morning, Mr. Burke. Is there any mail for me? Well, I don't know yet, Mr. Burke. I'm sorting it out. I'll keep right at it. This young gent said he didn't mind waiting to buy his victuals. Oh, by the way, has a man named Barnaby Boggs been here? Well, I, I don't recollect seeing him. Well, I've heard the name. What does uh, Barnaby Boggs do? He's a photographer. Uh, a photographer? Yes. He's a good friend of mine. What does he uh, What does he do with the photographs? Oh, he sends them to Horace Greeley in New York. 
I think Mr. Greeley plans to publish some of them. Well, Sam, I, I just remembered an errand. I, I'll return later for my mail. All right, Mr. Burke. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. When Burke heard that Barnaby Boggs was a photographer, he hurried to the cafe and approached the table where Matt and Jed were playing cards. Hi, Mr. Burke. Sit down. Yes, <laughs> Did you decide to pay us a thousand dollars, or do we tell what we know about you? Well, you fool, there may not be a deal. Huh? You told me about a man named Boggs, and you said he was a surveyor. That's what we thought. He denied it, but he had an outfit on the tripod. That was a camera. He's a photographer. That's the word he used. He took a picture of that mountain, and before the posts were moved. What's more, the picture may be printed in Horace Greeley's newspaper. It'll probably be seen by railroad officials who will wonder why they bought the land for the tunnel from me. And that'll mean an investigation. Yeah, maybe nothing can be proved. Well, I can't count on that. We'll have to move the boundary back and call off the deal. Unless you get that picture away from Box. Well, where will we find him? There's a friend of his in the general store right now. Probably knows where Box is working. We'll see what we can do. Now, wait. One thing more. Huh? Getting the photograph of the mountain is not enough. You must also get the negative. Huh? The glass plate from which the picture was made. What? Oh, I'll explain what I... Jeb and Matt listened attentively and a few minutes later left the cafe. Meanwhile, Dan Reed completed his purchases. Standing beside his horse behind the store, he fastened his heavily loaded saddlebags and was about to mount when he saw two men approaching. One of them spoke. Hey there. You happen to know a gent named Barnaby Boggs? Yes. Why? Have you any idea where he's working right now? He planned to make pictures of Rocky Canyon. You might find them there. Did, uh, did Mr. Burke tell you I knew Barnaby Boggs? Why do you ask that? I just wondered uh, how you knew that Mr. Boggs and I are friends. Mr. Burke and the storekeeper are the only ones in town who know. Jed, what... this young gent is smart. He might talk about Burke and us after things happen to Boggs. You're right. What do you mean? What's going to happen to Barnaby Boggs? Don't move. A knife. It's close against your ribs. You're going with us, but first I'm taking your gun. Not without a fight. Hey, then move fast in self-defense as caught by the Lone Ranger. He slapped aside the knife as he leaped back and reached for the gun of his father, which he carried. I've got it. But before he could draw, he was gripped by Jed in a bear-like hug that held his arms to his sides. Help me. Right. I've got his gun. Now take it easy, young fellow, or I'll crouch on the head. Stop struggling. You're not going to gain anything by being knocked out. Dan realized the futility of further struggle. Disarmed and with his hands tied, he rode between Matt and Jed away from town. Get up there. Come on, Victor. After a long wait in the nearby woodland camp, the Lone Ranger sent Tonto to learn why Dan had been gone so long. When he saw the Indian returning at a speed that indicated trouble, he leaped to his feet. <laughs> oh, scout, oh, fella. Easy, scout, easy, fella. Tonto, where's Dan? Me talk while you saddle silver. Here's the saddle blanket. I got the saddle. Well, what about Dan? Well, me see tracks of Dan's horse near hitch rail. Boot marks show two men talk to Dan. They're signs of fight. Twenty scuffle marks. While helping the masked man saddle the great horse silver, Toto told what he had learned by examining the marks on the ground near the hitch rail. He finished by summarizing. You think Dan captured, put on horse... Taken away by two men. All right, we'll follow the trail. Easy, said Easy, fella. Easy, fella. Hold, hold, hold. Up, scout. Uh, 
Barnaby Boggs' red wagon stood close to the edge of Rocky Canyon, and the horses grazed nearby. Boggs was busy with his camera when he heard horses approaching. He saw Dan Reed riding between the two men who had chased him away from Balanced Rock Mountain, but didn't notice that Dan's hands were tied. Quick, sakes alive, Dan. Are these men your friends? No. Uh, a gun. Great day now. What's wrong? Dismount, Dan, and stand next to Boggs. What? Jed, you keep them both covered while I tie Boggs' hands. The hands of Dan and Boggs were tightly bound, and Jed stood guard with a drawn gun while Matt climbed into the big red wagon. Dan, what in tarnation does this mean? What's that critter doing in my wagon? He's looking for a picture you made the other day, before you were chased away from Balanced Rock Mountain. But why? Do you know? Yes, they were talking about it on the way here. I found the picture, Jed. And it's a good thing we got it. The posts show up mighty clear. What about that glass plate it was made from? I got that, too. I'll burn up this picture right now and take the glass plate back to show to Mr. Burke. What about Boggs and Dan? They're going to have a fatal accident. Huh? See how the ground slopes a bit toward the canyon? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the picture's burned. Go on, you two. Get inside the wagon. Why, you're going to murder us. It'll look like an accident, Boggs. It'll appear that you didn't bother to block the wheels because you thought the brake would hold. But the brake slipped. Savvy? Wait, listen now. You know too much. Get aboard. Oh. Climb over the seat and go on back. Oh, I'll watch him, Jed, while you roll the stones away from the front wheels. Then I'll release the brake and jump. Right. Before Jed could reach the front of the wagon and roll away the rocks that blocked the wheels, a shock rang out. Now, what's that? Bugs, did you hear that? Two men are coming. Shoot him. I'm going up. The Lone Ranger had fired the first shot as a warning, but when Jed returned the fire, he aimed to wound... No! I'm hit! My leg! It's the Lone Ranger! We're saved! I'm clearing out! I'll kill him! Scrawled on the ground with a bullet wound in the cap of his leg, Jed fired again. His shots went wild, but the masked man's aim was true. No! A silver bullet brushed Jed's arm, and in the meantime, Matt leaped to the ground. The wagon was between him and the oncoming Lone Ranger and Tonto. They didn't see the outlaw until he reached his horse and rode away. Watch that man on the ground, Toto. Uh, don't shoot me again. I'm already hit twice. One of the crooks is escaping. Uh, there, Dan, on wagon. Dan, you all right? Yes, sir. We're both all right, but our hands are tied. I'll release them. You lose time. The man's escaping. It'll only take a minute to cut those ropes. Turn around, Dan. Those crooks were going to kill us. Yes, and the one who's escaping stole a glass plate. A what? The negative of a picture I made. It proves that a boundary line was moved in a land swindle. Henry Burke hired the crooks to do it. There, Dan, your hands are free. Uh, I'll leave the knife. You free, Barnaby. Right. I sure hope you get that crook. I'll do my best. Oh, and the glass plate. Easy, steady, big fella. One, two, three. Matt had a head start, but his horse was no match for the dazzling speed of the great horse, Silver. He turned in the saddle and saw the masked man in pursuit. Get up! Get up there! He spurred his horse, but Silver continued to gain. Presently, he drew his gun. Riding at that speed, there was scant hope of a bullet hitting the mark. But Matt fired in desperation. By the time his gun was empty, he could hear the white stallion's thundering hoofbeats. Get up! Get up! The... Right in the wrong rope, you... They'll never get me alive! As Silver closed the gap, the Lone Ranger's lariat snaked out. The loop dropped over Matt's shoulders and tightened around his chest as the masked man reined in sharply. Hey, I... Pulled from the saddle, Matt hit the ground hard. The Lone Ranger quickly dismounted and drew a gun. Stay right there on the ground. Are you hurt? I guess not. But you, that mask... Someday you may know what it means. Uh, Where's the photographic plate you stole from Boggs? What good is it to you? That glass plate is proof that a boundary line was moved to steel land. Hand it over and don't try to break it. It's here in my pocket. And it's already broken. I fell on it. It's in a million pieces. (laughs) Here's what's left of your proof, mister. Now what'll you do? (laughs) I'll tie your hands and turn you and Jed over to the law. When the Lone Ranger reached the edge of the canyon with his prisoner, he found his friends beside the red wagon with Jed, whose wounds had been dressed by Tonto. Dan told what he knew about the attempted land swindle and finished by saying, Now both of the crooks will go to jail. Yeah, and Burke along with them. We'll turn these men over to the law, but it may be hard to prove that the boundary line was moved. I thought the photograph proved that, sir. 
And Burke must have thought so, too. He sent these men to get it. <laughs> what photograph? <laughs> Dan, you said this man burned the picture. Oh, yes, sir. But any number of pictures can be made from the glass negative. That's broken, Dan. Shattered. Barnaby Boggs grinned as he looked at the Lone Ranger. He reached into the wagon and brought out a finished photograph. Hey, is this the picture you're talking about? Well, where'd you get that? Wait, you saw me take it from my wagon. But I burned. You burned one print, but this picture's one of my best. So I printed a lot of extra copies to sell. <laughs> you, Matt, you stopped looking after you found one copy and the glass plate. Barnaby, may I have that picture? Yeah, you're welcome to it. I'll take it to the sheriff and explain what was done. You'll want to jail Henry Burke before he comes here with me to take charge of Jed and Matt. Easy, steady, big fellow. I'll be back. We'll wait right here. Come on, Silver. Good thing I made copies of that picture. Hey, Dan? Right. One for the sheriff. And I'll send a copy to Mr. Greeley and the railroad company and Mr. Gibson, who doggone near lost the chance to sell land to the railroad. I'd like one too, Mr. Boggs. Yes, sirree, Dan. I'll give one to you and one to the Lone Ranger. Part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.